All right. We're on. It's Thursday, you guys. It's been a while since I've had a video out, but we are back from Miami. I'm still sounding a little bit like a man. I've been in bed for a few days. Guys, anytime I travel, I find I get a cold, so I'm just like pumping the vitamins right now, taking uh, extra vitamins, uh, just trying to get myself feeling better. So I am back for a video today. We're back with another episode of Meg's Memo. Here is where we talk the latest in crypto, NFTs, and everything in Web3. Now, we've got lots to talk about today. We're going to go take a look at the market overview, you guys. We've got some stuff going on with crypto in Canada. It looks like Fidelity has maybe refiled now for a spot Bitcoin ETF. We've got to talk about FTT token, the FTX token being up 32% today. Guys, what are you thinking? Um, before we get into the video today, which we're going to do, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video. <music> And next, guys, I want you to head over to Instagram and follow me there. MegBZK is my handle. I don't know why it's showing like this. I've tried to fix it on this computer. It's not working for me. Um, but yes, follow me here. Here I've posted a lot of our content from Karate Combat. I've got a ton of content to get edited um, and posted up. I don't think you guys understand how uh, exciting this was for me. So first of all, for those of you that might not know me or, or you've been here a while, I get really, really nervous filming videos. I do. Um, and next, put me on the mats with Boss Rutten, who I have... Um, like looked up to and listened to his uh, all around fighting rounds weekly in my garage for the last five years since I started in MMA. And yeah, I was nervous, but this was one of the coolest events I've ever been to. And it was an absolute honor to get to talk to some of these guys, um, to spend time with them. I really hope that we get to go back to another Karate Combat event. And I really want to get some workouts in and stuff. I feel like I took uh, a lot from this event and just meeting like a really, really good, awesome group of people. Uh, so yeah, go to my Instagram, subscribe and Check out the content from there, guys, because it was awesome. If you guys don't know Boss Root, an absolute legend in the space, um, quick shout out to Karate Combat. And you guys, Mason and I do have a KC40 overview coming, so make sure those notifications are on. Um, next, we're going to go over to Twitter, you guys. Um, again, thank you to all of my new followers on Twitter. Guys, I really do appreciate you if you're not following me there. Guys, get on Twitter. I didn't even know that Twitter still existed, but um, until I got into crypto, Twitter is one of the platforms that I use the most. It's probably the one I'm the weakest at, but follow me over on Twitter. Um, this morning, good morning to everyone who will not be using FTX Exchange when it relaunches. Guys, there's news out today about that. We're gonna go over it here shortly. Um, but let's take a look at the overall market cap. Now, the news of Fidelity refiling for a spot Bitcoin ETF has just come out. Um, so are we gonna possibly see a little bit of movement in Bitcoin? We're starting to, it's up another $100. Um, but that's something to keep an eye out for. Now, there was it was speculated that that may be happening, but no, it is official that is now happening. Um, let's see. We've got, yeah, 1.18 trillion market cap. Again, we really want to hold that uh, 1 trillion mark. We want to stay above that um, or else we'll, we'll take a deep dive, I think. But XRP, we're sitting at 47 cents. And Cardano, 27 cents. Guys, nothing I say or do on this channel is financial advice. If I say I like something, do not run out and buy it. Um, get researching. Get seeing it from, you know, maybe how I see it and trying to understand why I might like it. But Cardano, in my opinion, um, this is one that I like to dollar cost average. Um, so pick up consistently. And for me, 27 cents is definitely a decent price point there. Dogecoin sitting at six cents. We've got Solana, which has been um, doing really well over the last 24 hours. Now, I haven't looked into why that um, has had that huge spike there, but Solana is back up. We've got Polygon uh, sitting around 62 cents and so forth. So anyway, let's take a look at the FTT token. I really don't even like covering this on my channel, but um, I'm, I'm going to. So anyway, this has rocketed because there is news of FTX relaunching since the whole Sam Bankman free debacle. If you're new to my channel, if you're just following us, that was one of the biggest upsets in crypto history. Um, you know, that's the platform that Tom Brady, Seth Curry, um, a bunch of people did um, promote. And unfortunately, they were scamming um, the system in the background. And 
the the platform uh, went bankrupt. So anyway, this is here. That is what's happening. Um, I mean, I personally will not be using the FTX platform and exchange if it does actually relaunch. Um, I mean, we're here. A lot of us are here to make money. And if you're making money, that's great. But have some morals and ethics, you guys. Um, so let's take a look at that. So yeah, FTX token has seen an increase in a price for five days in a row as a discussion around the relaunch of the now defunct FTX derivatives platform has taken the spotlight. Why do we keep giving this stuff attention as I'm sitting here talking to you about the FTX platform? Um, but anyway, I, I shouldn't have even really pulled this article up, you guys, just because I um, have already talked about that today. So Let's take a look at Fidelity refiling for the spot beat Bitcoin ETF. So I do think that we're going to see a lot of people that were denied the spot Bitcoin ETF refile for that, especially with the news of BlackRock filing. Um, I think that that's going to um, be more and more apparent here that, oh, well, if BlackRock can do it and if they do get approved, then now's the time for us to refile and do that. And maybe they'll see that with all of these asset managers uh, filing at once, maybe that'll, that will make a difference, but we'll have to see what happens. Um, again, uh, Fidelity is one of the largest asset managers in the world. Um, BlackRock is is the biggest and Fidelity's up there as well. But they have refiled. So that could be, in fact, why we are seeing um, Bitcoin's price move a little bit in this hour, <laughs> in this hour. Um, all right. We've got a blog post from Coinbase to quickly touch on here. So Canadian lawmakers back blockchain with landmark recommendations. So the Canadian House of Commons Parliamentary Standing Committee on Industry and Technology has published a comprehensive report recognizing blockchain as an emerging industry with significant economic opportunities. Yay, Canada! Is that finally some sort of win for Canada? Um, but they have published that. So if you guys want to, this is this is really what they're saying here um, in this report, you guys, is there, they have outlined, let's just go to it. Let's take a look at this report together. Um, blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, and beyond. Um, here is the report. So you can see all of the sections that they have started to discuss. So list of recommendations, blockchain technology and beyond. Um, they've gone over kind of use cases, non-cryptocurrency applications, applications, platforms, um, and they've really broke down the the categories of where they need some clarity. So, you know, the fact that they are doing this does put them ahead of the U.S. in the regulatory um, aspect of this. So, you know, I like to see this, guys. This is a huge document to read through. Again, I haven't been feeling great. I've been in bed for the last few days. I have browsed over some of these categories. But if you need some reading material, if you're from Canada, I highly recommend going and checking this out because um, there's quite a bit of valuable points that they have made in here. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll make a video on this whole document. But happy to see that Canada knows that we need some uh, regulations in place and that we need clarity clarity on on um, blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, stable coins, and all of that. Now, one of my favorite projects, as you guys know, I do love Polygon. Now, Warner Music and Polygon Labs is launching a blockchain music accelerator. So quick shout out to Polygon Labs and to uh, Warner Music. That's extremely exciting news. The program will offer projects working at the intersection of music and the blockchain access to funding, marketing support, and other resources. Um, so they did announce this yesterday, but they have formed the new music accelerator program in in partnership with polygon labs okay um now, basically, what is this program? Let's just read this here because this is going to give you a quick overview. But the program will specifically seek out projects operating at the intersection of music and the blockchain. The top priorities uh, for Warner and Polygon include companies attempting to create new mechanisms for the decentralized distribution of music. Those focused on fostering artist fan communities, those building on-chain ticketing solutions, and those exploring music-related collectible merchandise. Successful projects in those areas would ideally 
operate on the Polygon blockchain. So that would be a big deal. Now, I know Ticketmaster has already done stuff. Um, we've got, you know, the chain smokers, and um, I believe it was Diplo who also released music NFTs. There's a lot of music artists already in the industry, but that would be really cool if Warner Music um, could do this and it could all be on Polygon. So definitely exciting news. Um, now let's move on to this, you guys. UK crypto stablecoin rules receive royal assent passing into law. So this bill has now been passed. So the Financial Services and Markets Act 2023 classifies crypto as a regulated financial activity. So shout out to the UK. Again, they are getting um, stuff into regulation. Now, the one thing, regulation, complete full regulation um, and rules aren't aren't always a good thing. Um, yes, we want regulation clarity, but we more just want the rules laid out so that we know. You know, too much overstep can really have a negative effect on the crypto industry because that's not what crypto stands for. So I really hope that with the regulations, wherever you are in the world, that there is that happy uh, medium happening, that there is that healthy balance happening um, between, you know, what the people want and what the regulators want for crypto. But um, the UK bill giving regulators the power to supervise crypto and stablecoin was approved by King Charles Thursday. King Charles? <laughs> Guys, it sounds so weird still saying king. Like, the fact that we have kings and queens and like that that the, the royal family that's all the real thing is just so crazy with me or feels so crazy to me still but it's true but anyway the act gives us control of our financial services rule book following the UK's exit from the EU enabling regulation of crypto assets to support their safe adoption in the UK said financial services minister Andrew Griffith in a statement so um, the bill which was introduced in 2022 gives regulators more power over the financial system including crypto while the bill was debated in parliament amendments were added to treat all crypto as a regulated act activity and to supervise crypto promotions. So maybe they'll get some more clarity and some rules around all of that um, here shortly. Now, hopefully the U.S. will soon do the same, same like all of these countries, guys. There just needs to be some, some more guidelines in places, I think. Um, moving on. Um, MasterCard to continue crypto foray with the beta launch of the blockchain app store. So it seems that MasterCard has been in and out of this crypto um, space, this Web3 space as well, but it does seem that they are still actively working in the background. And it's large companies like this that we need to see come into the space to really uh, uh, make this adoption happen. So the credit card giant is expected to release the beta version of the product this summer. So in its latest blockchain push, MasterCard on Wednesday said that the payment processor would roll out a test version of its multi-token network this summer. The product was set to be launched as the beta in the United Kingdom. Um, so MasterCard's head of crypto and blockchain products in a Wednesday letter said that MTN will act as a testbed for developing live pilot applications and use cases with financial institutions institutions, fintechs, and central banks. Again, this is what we need to see. The plan is to roll out MTN to more global markets, pending additional partners. The idea hinges upon selling developers on building on MasterCard's permission blockchain, which the company has positioned as capable of transforming its payment capabilities. Um, so, I mean, MasterCard is one step ahead, in my opinion, from a lot of the other um cards out there, right? They are fully adopting this new technology and they're getting stuff into testing. So shout out to MasterCard for that. Now we do have a sponsor for today's video. Quick shout out to XYO. I'm excited for this because I really do think XYO could be a sleeping giant, but always do your own research, you guys. Um, we're going to take a look at their project today. What's really funny is when I used to watch Mason's channel when I had first gotten into crypto um, or a little bit later on, I remember him doing a dedicated video about XYO and talking about it a lot on his YouTube live streams. Um, so if you want to see Baby Mason, go way back, go on his channel and find his XYO video. Um, but anyway, he's going to love me for that. Um, a self-sovereign ecosystem for a crypto graphic future. We're going to try and break this project down a little bit for you guys. Um, it is a little bit more technical, but I think it's really cool what they are doing. So XYO is a technology protocol designed to improve the val validity, certainty, and value of data. We know data is a huge issue um, in today's world. So we are building a data marketplace that gives users a gold standard for any apps, websites, and blockchain technologies that rely on trusted data. 
and they say that they are introducing the world's first reality oracle. Okay, so oracle, super confusing to a lot of people, I'm sure, but what is an oracle? The best way that I can explain an oracle is we have in the real world, we have um, data that needs to be pulled whenever you go to write up a contract. So um, for instance, you're at a dealership, they need to pull a credit application. You go to rent a, um, an apartment or rent a house, they need to pull your um, background checks. They, they need to pull all sorts of data, that real world data, credit application, background checks, um, all of that kind of stuff. So now that needs to get to the system. So an Oracle, pulls all of that real world data to the chain for the chain to use. Okay, so that's the best way, easiest way that I can explain it. It's the real world data being pulled to the chain for the chain to use. Um, so anyway, so that's what um, they are doing, but they are building the first reality where Oracle, which is the bridge between secure blockchain data and our physical world. XYO improves the certainty and trust for data and ensures people rightfully own their data that they create. We're building the technology they need for a fully data-driven world. Um, I like that, you guys. That's a, that's a huge problem today is, is the data and owning our data and it being safe and secured properly and being stored properly. Um, and that's what XYO is doing. So on their website here, XYO relies on a mindful development XYO relies on mindful development decisions to grow our node count and developer resources. Guys, if you have any interest in um, being a part of the network, you can go to their website here and you can go ahead and read through that. Now, powering the network token, the XYO token, I'm not going to talk too much about their token. It is an ERC20 token, um, but you can go there. If you guys are wondering where you can find their token, I've got it pulled up here on coin market cap just type in xyo and you can see all of the places that it is listed it's already on coinbase already on kucoin if you use decentralized applications uniswap v2 um, so it is already on big platforms so the other issue that xyo is solving is data permanence data needs to be permanent we can't just be we should not just be able to erase data. But the data doesn't have to just be permanent. We need the quality and the actual data to be permanent. It needs to be authentic. So authenticity matters, you guys, in the crypto world. Authenticity matters. So data permanence, XYO is taking care of that. They are solving that problem. Data permanence is critically important to the functioning of the XYO network. It ensures that the data collected by the network can be used reliably over time. So in the XYO network, you guys, the data is collected from a variety of networks, including XYO mobile devices, mobile devices, IoT sensors, and a bunch of other devices that do collect data. And speaking of mobile devices, they do have their coin app as well. Well, but I think that's going to be safe for a full other video, you guys, because it's really cool what they are doing. And that is everything for today's video, you guys. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video. Follow the Gold Squad Discord as well, or follow the Gold Squad and join the Gold Squad Discord. You can chat with me one on one there. I can help answer your questions, help you kind of navigate this space a bit. The link is down in the description below. Leave a comment, and I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye.